Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am flying a, well, an interesting part of history. This is a Kerbal recreation of something which was called the Silber Vogel, or Silver Bird, I believe, in German. It was a Nazi weapon concept. The idea was a rocket-powered bomber that would fly across the Atlantic Ocean, drop bombs on the US, and then continue all the way over to land in Japan or whatever. Uh, this was one of the crazier concepts that came out of the America Bomber Program, a program which was designed to uh, send bombers that would bomb the US. Obviously, the, the US was out of range of any German assets, and so uh, Hermann Goring would be really interested in any aircraft that could do it. Certainly, they had aircraft that could fly people to Japan, for example. That regularly happened during the war, but being able to carry a bomb load to the US and then return, that was not something that, that Nazi Germany had the capability of. So, um, this one is Silbervogel, which well, the idea was it would fly down the runway, as you saw on a rocket sled, accelerating it to over Mach 1 already, and then as it gets into the air, it fires up its main rocket and that carries it up into space. Now this design here is very much in shape, roughly correct, but it is certainly not anywhere near to accurate in terms of mass. This is a lot lighter. The, the bomb, uh, or the bomber design that they had in mind was something like 100 tons. This is a lot smaller. Now, for stability reasons, I need to keep pumping the fuel forwards to make sure that the nose remains, uh, it, you know, remains the heaviest parts that were aerodynamically stable. And what we're going to do is basically a little hop, not quite out of the atmosphere. Although the the actual design was supposedly exo-atmospheric, this one I'm only going to take up to about 30 to 40 kilometers, basically high enough that the drag becomes very low and that it can fly around. And then the idea is as it falls back in, we'll skip back out of the atmosphere. So the real concept was that it would fly outside the atmosphere and would skip over the US, drop a bomb load, and of course the reason why it's a man design is because this was in the 1940s, they didn't think about automated targeting systems as being particularly accurate, especially not after thousands of kilometers. Obviously the V1 and V2 both had autonomous navigation systems that were able to put the target, put the weapon, well, within the Greater London area. But as anyone that lives in London tells you, the Greater London area is actually quite big. Okay, so there we go, 40 kilometers and we're out of fuel. So now we're going to glide up. I'm just going to nose the, or lift the nose up just a bit and that will, that will basically continue to lift the aircraft a little higher. Uh, let's bring up the flight data here. So I want to probably keep the angle of attack to within about 10 degrees. If it gets too far out, I think this is slightly unstable and it will suffer. Now the actual Silber Vogel design would have it skipping through the atmosphere several times. Every time it would, it would fall back, it would angle itself to skip back out. It would lose a bit of energy each time and the skips would become shorter and shorter. But it would get halfway around the world and eventually arrive in Japan was the proposal, where it would land and, uh, of course, be rearmed or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it could do the same mission in the opposite direction, but I don't know. The, it was proposed to have a four and a half ton bomb load, which, uh, I mean, would probably have little more than propaganda value, to be honest. They had identified high value targets and everything but there was, of course, the specter of a Nazi-built nuclear weapon, which was obviously being developed, but wasn't making anything like the progress of the Manhattan Project. You know, a four and a half ton nuke delivered could uh, certainly have changed the course of the war. So, okay, I'm starting to fall back down, and I'm going to try and make this skip. What I want to do is deposit my bomb load on this continent here and then skip back out to the atmosphere and land on a completely different continent. I'm not going to be able to fly all the way around the world because this is rather under spec Even although Kerbin itself is rather under spec I've under spec this even more. Anyway, I haven't figured this out, but I'm going to maintain about a 10 degree angle of attack, and it does seem to oscillate quite a bit. But that should be enough to arrest my descent and then hopefully kick me up at least one more time, and then from there I can glide. 
Now, as it turns out, uh, a post-war analysis unearthed some errors in the initial calculations and it was discovered that the amount of heat that they were expecting it to be subjected to would actually have been way higher than they, they had estimated. So it would have been destroyed had they ever built it without catching this error. However, this design was incredibly important, or it's our landmark. It was the first manned aircraft designed to fly outside of the atmosphere and for that it's very important. But even more than that, there was one crucial innovation the designers came up with which has had a lasting legacy in rocket science. They uh, had the idea of, of regenerative cooling, right? The idea that you run your fuel and your oxidizer in tubes around the engine bell to keep the engine bell cool and stop it evaporating under the intense heat generated by the combustion. Okay, so you see now that my vertical speed is now decreasing we're about to start going upwards and I think we're in a good position after we start going upwards to start deploying our, our weapons. I'm gonna try turning this a bit because I wanna head kinda southeast a little after this so I'm just gonna imagine that there's some high value target there that we want to hit with a four and a half ton bomb load. Now this uh, well this is rather impractical because it has Bombay doors here, and I don't think the real one would have had Bombay doors. I'm not sure if we had external munitions or what. But there we go, bombs away. Close that thing up before it you know, melts in the atmosphere, and then we're gonna see how high we get this thing again. So our vertical speed is still rising. Excellent. So we're, we're really pushing some height on this thing, and we're turning. We are actually making a course correction, which is good. We don't want to go to that island because that island is a little too close to the people we've just bombed. But there is a continent maybe about a thousand kilometers southeast. Actually, I don't know. I'm hundreds of kilometers southeast from here. There we go. Altitude. Well, we've, we've stopped gaining vertical speed, but we're still moving upwards at a decent rate. So this is going to be a much smaller uh, skip. We're certainly not getting outside of the atmosphere on either version. And I'm sure I could scale this up and make that happen, but... I just wanted to try flying this mission. Uh, obviously, I'm lacking precision targeting mechanisms, so I'm not going to be able to drop those things anywhere near the target. Now, the designers, uh, Eugene Sanger and uh, Irene Brett, who actually got married, incidentally, they uh, continued working on the concept. They pitched it to, I believe, the French and the American governments, although I think they might have dropped the America bomber name. And uh, apparently Joseph Stalin got really interested in the concept of a rocket bomber and he tasked uh, his son and some other uh, people to like go to France and kidnap the designers. But that plan failed and so uh, Mislav Keldish basically you know, put, headed up a group or they set up a design bureau to try and uh, duplicate the design. They came up, came up with their own concept, which also included ramjets for boosting it up early on. Uh, and that this is, of course, a whole interesting field. We've, that was certainly never flew either, but it's another really cool concept. Of course, by the time the Russians or the Soviets were designing it, they were well on the way to having a nuclear weapon. And of course, a nuclear payload makes the idea a whole lot more tenable, even if the technological challenges are still pretty darn incredible. Anyway, so I'm now running this at four times regular speed, trying to glide back to this continent. The friendly lands, my, my allies in this great war or whatever. Anyway, while the Soviets put a lot of energy and effort into their uh, unique design, it never made it off the drawing board. However, some of the concepts and some of the research ultimately uh, also wound up in cruise missile designs. Again, none of those actually flew, but this is all part of, you know, design and testing and everything. You're going to throw ideas out there and keep testing them, and some of them, some of the bits actually work, and some of them make it into viable products. Anyway, this thing as I'm flying back, you can see it just wants to wobble all over the place. It was, in fact, slightly unstable. If I, if I took the a stability control off this thing would just either would pitch out a control and it would crash but uh, with the stability control on I could keep the angle of attack low enough that it could glide for a really 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 long way 
and it could glide at quite low speed, surprisingly. Obviously, um, the original Silbervogel design was built around a lifting body with stubby wings, and I've tried to do this as much as possible. I'm using Ferrum Aerospace, of course, so it does get a lot of lifting effect from the body. I think I'm going to need to shift the wings and the tailplane further back to improve on this. Anyway, landing this, well, it would be nice to have landed on an airstrip on friendly land, but I guess due to navigation failures, it's just the nearest flat-looking bit of land that I could find. Uh, needed to adjust the brake torque, I remember. That was something I'd managed to forget. And now it was just a case of very gently touching this down on the surface here. Or rather, waiting for the surface to come up and hit me at the right time, depending upon whether I hit it going uphill or downhill. But there we are, a successful mission for this uh, rather interesting corner of rocket science history. So yeah, how far are we from home? Well, we're a long, long way from home, I suspect. I think I think we've gone about a third of the way around the planet, which is pretty good. I, yeah, uh, yeah, about one third of the way. Not quite antipodal, but a pretty good effort. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Well, as it happens, this thing didn't spring fully formed from my mind. Uh, it turns out the hardest part of building something that's launched by a rocket sled that goes supersonic on the ground is building something that goes supersonic on the ground. Uh, <laughs> pretty much everything would fail. It took a lot of effort to come down to the design that I ultimately had. So here's a compilation of all of the best failures.